Well, hey, good morning, Hopewell. It's good to be with you. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, I am so excited to be here this morning with you. Will you stand as we get ready to worship our great God? I know it's a little dreary out there this morning, a little gloomy at times, um, but this morning we're going to sing, Your Love Awakens Me. We're going to talk about the love of God. And then right after that, we're going to sing canons, and we talk about the holiness and greatness of God. And then we're going to sing what a friend we have in Jesus. And I think it's really important that we recognize that because of Christ's love for us, we can actually truly appreciate his greatness and his holiness because we get to be near to him. We get to be alive in Christ. So then we can truly understand and appreciate God's greatness. And then because we appreciate his greatness, we can live in a place of humility and relationship with him. And we understand what a friend we have in Jesus. And we can take everything to him in prayer. So this morning, will you bow your heads and close your eyes as we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your love that awakens us, that makes us new. God, thank you for the new life we have because of your son. Lord, you are holy and mighty. You're so great and so awesome. All glory and honor and power belong to you forever. Amen. God, what a friend we have in Jesus. Thank you. This morning we want to take it all to you. In your name we pray. Amen. between us by the cross you came and broke them down you broke them down and there were chains around us by your grace we are no longer bound no longer bound you called me out of the grave you called me into the light you called my name and then my heart came alive your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. shaking all the dead are coming back to life i'm back to life and hear the song awaken all creation singing we're alive because you're alive you call me out of the grave you call me into the light you call my name and then my heart came alive your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. And what a love we found, death can't hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive. And what a love we found, death can't hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive. And what a love we found, death can't hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive. is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me.
from the clouds A strange and lovely sound I hear it in the thunder and the rain And it's ringing in the skies Like cannons in the night As the music of the universe plays We're singing you are holy You're great and mighty The moon and the stars Declare who you are I'm so song of galaxies It's reaching far beyond the Milky Way So let's join in with the sound Come on, let's sing it out As the music of the universe plays We're singing you out
sorrow share. Jesus knows our every weakness, so take it to the Lord in prayer. And are we weak and heavy? the load of care precious Savior still our refuge take it to the morning field do your friends despise for Father, we come to you uh, today, gathering to worship, and what truly a wonderful friend we do have in you. Um, you were the uh, original cell phone that you don't screen our calls, you pick up whenever we go to you, um, that, that we can take any problem we have, uh, any relationship, uh, and help us go to you in joy, too, the, the, the praises that, that you bestow on us, um, the blessings that we have, that don't don't let us be a stranger to you. You're the ultimate friend. And you'll all, you'll be that we need. In your name, amen. amen. For those who don't know, that's Jamie Deemer, one of the elders at Hopewell Church. Thank you. Thank you for praying. Hey, um, on a fun note to start off with, we had a good party with you the other week. It's been a fun couple services together. We got to do outside last week, uh, but the week before, we had the band in, I believe, and we had the Great Hopewell Bake Off, and so before the Bake Off, uh, Becky and I were talking, wanted to do something special for the winner, uh, and start a new tradition among us, so I I'm going to publicly, you know, award some stuff today, um, and if you're jealous, that's a good thing, um, you'll never hear Pastor normally say that, but it is, because uh, you, you can bring your A-game for the next one and try to get yourself a, a spatula, which uh, Becky said looked bigger in pictures, but it is hopeful. And, um, oh, yeah, oh, uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I mean, let me just, let me just do a little Vanna White here. So, uh, you know, this could be you. Luella Drake, would you come on down Luella, for the winner of the, of the 2021, hope. yep, yep. There you go. Thank you, thank you for providing unhealthy desserts for us to eat. Appreciate it. All right. All right, kids, you are dismissed to kids' ministry. And as, as the kids leave, look at these happy kids. Look at the joy on their faces. And you know what? We want to bring more joy to those little kids' faces with VBS coming up. As you see, I, I'm wearing a T-shirt today. Not my normal, but it's a special T-shirt. We're getting ready for VBS in, in two weeks. So I wanted to say thank you. Uh, we have attendance higher than anything we've had uh, in, in Becky and Angel's, what, 13 years of 10 years of leading, um, so we're really grateful for that, really strong attendance for the VBS this year, we have enough adult volunteers, thank you, all the tags were taken, thank you for those that took tags and, and uh, brought supplies, uh, we have uh, two more requests of you, well, three actually, um, first after the service today, if you would help stack chairs, Becky would kind of help direct, but we need to take down almost all the chairs in here to use this space for ministry and decoration, because this sanctuary will look very different next week, we're doing an outside service next week. So it'll take about two weeks to get this thing sort of looking like it should. And uh, this upcoming Friday night, you are all co most cordially and desperately invited um, to come help uh, set up for the VBS and, and do some, some decoration, especially people that are fine being on ladders. So per Becky and Angel's request, if you are planning on being, being here Friday to help 
and serve. You don't have to be a volunteer the week of, but if you can come this Friday to help volunteer, would you raise your hand? She wants to get a rough count so that she can order pizza. So, oh, oh, thank, oh yeah, honey cuts, thank. I see that hand. I, see, I need five more hands. Can I get another hand? Another hand. Another hand. Another hand. All right. You good, Becky? Yeah. All right. Um, two more notes. Uh, sorry, the third thing. Um, Tear down chairs, Friday night, work night, and I, I, I sincerely mean this. We, we really need your prayers. I mean, I, I mean just, let's just be frank here about what we're doing. A VBS, the, the heart of a VBS is having young people who don't know Jesus yet or are just starting their path on Jesus, encountering him, being transformed by him through salvation and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, and having a whole life that's radically changed because of the seeds planted in these weeks. We are hoping for supernatural work in these kids life and any supernatural ministry needs god's supernatural hand we do not have the capacity in and of ourselves to do this we can host a fun vbs we can do that that's in human ability and strength but we all know that ministry is something of the lord that we need his help and blessing and his spirit's provision for so i i say this with all seriousness please please pray pray i am not interested in doing a vbs just to have fun for a week for my kids it's not worth it I am very much interested in kids meeting the Lord, and we want to pray for that heart. Yeah, would you please pray for us in the next coming weeks? Make a note of it, however you remember things that are important to you, and just say a short prayer, long prayer, whatever. Say a prayer, please. Young adults are meeting weekly. Uh, Cody is here in Bethany. Would you, would you raise your hand, Cody? Or maybe there's some, yeah. Their, their hand raised. Say hi, Cody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Cody and the young adults are meeting weekly. Um, Jody is also serving. She's a, they are up, a, up in Michigan most weekends during the summer. Also, we have a Tin Caps game sign up back there if you want to uh, enjoy a Tin Caps game that's coming up as a church. Um, outside services next week. The last thing of announcements is our monthly prayer focus for July is for one of our sister United Brethren churches called Olive Branch United Brethren. There is some pretty cool, pretty interesting news about this. They are legit famous um, for all the wrong reasons. Um, oh. I was going to leave it as a teaser, but I probably shouldn't end it on that. No, that's probably too much of a teaser. Um, you, can, you can actually, they're, they're, about 20-something years ago, the pastor didn't show up for service. And like, where's the pastor at? They go over to the parsonage, and he and his wife and what, one or two of, the ki- two of the kids were all murdered in the parsonage. Like, that, they found that out. So, so when, I, when I got to know Wesley, who's their current pastor, he was doing his, doctrinal, his uh, dissertation about his master's dissertation about this and the long-term repercussions. But there's actually a, a, po- a history, a true crimes podcast out now, and it's like legit. So all that to say, that church is in need of some prayer. Um, it, no, they're doing great. Um, they, they're, sorry, that was a bad transition. I didn't plan that. That was all. <laughs> Olive Branch United Brethren is in Lakeview, Indiana, which is about 11 miles directly south of South Bend. And there's about 800 people in the community. So this is a, a small church with a nice long history, and Wesley is working on a turnaround for them, and, and there's new vision, and some new families are on board, but we want to pray for our brother Wesley in, in Olive Branch for, um, for you know, leaders to step in and help own ministry and for a uh, vibrant, compelling vision for them that they might be effective at reaching their community for the Lord. And we do definitely want to pray for them, and I, I think about it, and you know, we know as, as an American culture, bigger is always better. But what does it mean to be a faithful pastor in a faithful church in a town of 800? You know, you're not going to be a mega church, and you don't have to be to be faithful and honored by God, right? Faithfulness is the reward. Faithfulness is the goal. So we want to pray for them that they would be faithful um, in, their, in their call and reach their community. So let's just say a prayer for these couple things, and then we'll jump into the sermon proper. God, I want to say thank you for VBS coming up. I just pray again that, that real life eternity change would happen. Thank you for the young adult group. May that be a vibrant community that is... Um, full of trust, full of centeredness on you, Jesus, full of deep community and relationship, and that it helps uh, young adults to, to cement their worldview and their lifestyles around you. Pray for um, Olive Branch, United Brethren. And I pray for Pastor Wesley and his church leadership that they would have a powerful, clear vision of what it means to reach Lakeville for the Lord, to reach their neighbors and their community. Thank you for the the cool things that are already taking place, but we, God, we ask you would further and advance that, and that you would call and work in the lives of people, that they might be there and strengthen that church. They may continue on a long and um, wonderful history of being effective for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This year is about prayer. 
right? That should, should be no news to anybody unless you're a recent guest, but the big point of 2021 as Hopeful Church is to learn what it means and to take the few, first few steps on being a praying church. And so we're trying to make changes, right, along that. But today, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to do a couple sermons about prayer to help highlight that before we jump into the book of Hebrews, which will start this fall, our next big work. But this summer, we're doing some topical. We wanted to do something about prayer. The Christian religion is unique. It's truly unique. Not only for the obvious uniqueness that it's the only true religion, but what God wants from us in this relationship is unique. Look at the major religions of the world. The Muslim religion, paradise is for those that are faithful enough at the five pillars of Islam. Right? Their five main obedient actions, the, the praying, the uh, journey to Mecca, the almsgiving, you know, etc. If you do those well enough, you get to go to heaven. You look at Hinduism, Buddhism, and their belief in karma, that those who reach the one or nirvana are those that have stored up enough good karma by doing the right actions. Or look at the Jewish faith, especially Second Temple Judaism. At the time of Jesus, it was centered on the rules and the extensive law. God approves of those who are obedient in every little tiny aspect of their life. That's how you get God's approval. We look at all these major world religions and see at their core, their God wants obedience in impersonal impersonal adherence to the rule. The divine being in the major world religions is not interested in the thing that the Christian God is primarily interested in, which is relationship. Relationship. Now if you look at the arc of history of God's interaction with humanity throughout scriptures, you see this ongoing theme between God and humanity. Humanity, his people, it, it is this, God pursues relationship with his people. Now let me caveat, does God still desire and want our obedience? Absolutely, if you love me, you obey my commands. But that's not the heart of the Christian faith. Obedience is designed to be a fruit and a result of the relationship, never a replacement for it. In Genesis 3, we see that God walks with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. We get a picture of intimate, personal fellowship. It was a regular habit for God to walk in the garden and spend time with his created beings. We see a covenant relationship between God and Israel. In fact, when Israel would go astray from the covenant, he would call them what? An adulterous people. And the very fact that he would call them adulterous means that th this relationship is almost like a marriage with friendship and fidelity and deep relationship and intimacy. And so when you break it, you're adulterous because of what the relationship is supposed to be. Moses would meet with God face to face in the tent of meeting. Our God is our father, and he's a good father, the best of fathers, and he desires relationship with his kids. The Holy Spirit indwells us to be our constant companion and friend. Jesus walks with his disciples for three years before his death and resurrection. Is there any real reason why he needed to come three years in advance and do, and into his public ministry? Does the atonement need three years of precursor ministry before he dies on the cross? What motivates that three years? God desires relationship with his people. He always has. And every act of discipline from God in our lives is aimed at restoring relationship. Every command is intended to maintain right relationship. And salvation is offered to bring us back into relationship. And heaven, the great reward of our faith, is a place of perfect relationship, unbroken relationship between us and our good Father and our King and our God. God is primarily concerned about relationship with us, and he always has been. Now, let me add one more piece to your thinking before we step into the text of the day. There, not only is Christianity unique in that God wants a relationship with his people, Christianity is unique in that our God, Jesus, has two natures. Historically, we have said he is Fully God and fully man. Fully God and fully man. Not separate beings, not blended into one in some crazy milkshake. He is God. Fully God and fully man in the same person at the same time. And it's a great mystery of faith. But what else do you expect for the inf when the finite are dealing with the infinite? It's a mystery. We don't know how it all works. But that's true. And so Jesus being fully God means he's in 
independent beings. There's, he has no need of anyone anywhere outside of himself. Nothing external does God need. But as fully human, we see that Jesus needs something. You read the Gospels, and he falls asleep, and he needs to eat food. He's got some needs because he's fully human. But as the lockdowns in the past year clearly indicate and accelerate a trend that's happening in our society of increased isolation, we realize more than ever that we need more than food and sleep. We need people. Human beings are made to need people. So let me suggest this maybe weird idea. Maybe Jesus, being fully human, needed other people, needed friendship. The companionship of the 12, the friendship of Peter, James, and John, three of the 12 that he sets apart. And he wants their support in this most tragic of seasons. Tim, would you come up and read the passage of Scripture for today? And in this, you'll see Jesus looking for friendship, I think. Good morning. This morning's passage you'll find in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26. Uh, for those of you that have a pew Bible, it's on page 996. Chapter 26, verse 36. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Here in the garden, we see Jesus pursuing relationship through prayer and with prayer. In this moment of crisis, the reality of Jesus' arrest and torture and death and being forsaken by God is upon him, and he is deeply troubled. And Jesus turns to God in prayer. Side note for the sermon today. How do you respond in moments of crisis in your life? Do you respond by relying upon prayer? And I think many of us would either do that already or desire to do that. But I want to note that Jesus prepares himself for praying in this crisis moment by praying faithfully throughout his life. The time to prepare for a crisis is before it, not during it. The time to put on your seatbelt is before the car wreck, not during it. Prepare for difficulty by regularly going to God in prayer before it happens. But you see, Jesus, the God in the flesh, the perfect human being, models a strong dependence upon the habit of prayer in his life. There's value in reading scripture at a very slow pace and digging in very deep. 
There's also value at times in reading large swaths of scripture at a time. And if you read large swaths, patches, sections, chapters of scripture in a go, you, you get some notes in the life of Jesus. Look at what he does. At the beginning of his ministry, he spends time fasting in prayer, Luke 4. To prepare for ministry, he prays. At the end of a tough time of ministry or of work, he prays. You want to recover from a day of work? Prayer. Jesus placed his hands on little kids and prayed for them. Matthew 19, 13, to bless others, pray for them. Jesus walks on water and then calls Peter out to walk on water with him, right? A famous story that's inspiring to many of us, Matthew 14. But the whole reason why the disciples are in that boat and Jesus isn't is he sent them ahead of him so he could pray. Prayer sets the stage for powerful acts of God in our life. A lot of lessons we can learn from Jesus on prayer. Luke 15, 16, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Jesus had a perfect relationship with God the Father. The relationship that all of us, deep down inside, long for. And Jesus prayed, and he prayed often. So we cannot ignore the truth that's staring us in the face right now in the life of Jesus. God wants a relationship with us. And we build that relationship through prayer. So I ask you, is a servant greater than his master? Are we somehow greater than Jesus that we don't need to regularly rely and depend upon prayer for power, rest, relationship, and to see powerful ministry happen? If Jesus, God in the flesh, relied upon, upon it, should we not as well? We need to pray. We need to pray. It's the primary avenue for relationship with God. But not only does he pray, he invites friends along with him. You know, turning your attention back to the passage at hand with Jesus' prayer in the garden, you notice how Jesus invited his friends to pray with him. In this moment of crisis, not only did Jesus turn to God in prayer, as was his regular response, he took his close friends with him. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, that'd be James and John, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to the point of death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed. Why do you think Jesus invited the 11? Judas was gone at this moment. He's going to be coming back soon with some friends. Um, why do you think he invited the 11 and then those three, those special inner circle three with him to prayer? Do, do you think Jesus actually needed their prayers to accomplish God's will for his life? Well, I think the easy answer to that is no, because they fell asleep. So certainly the disciples didn't pray much or didn't pray at all. Why did Jesus invite them to prayer? The most reasonable answer I can come to when I look at this setting of Jesus' life is that he invited them to prayer because he wanted their friendship, their relationship, their companionship in this moment. One of the most painful of all moments for him. Jesus wanted his friends by his side. So, of course, you know, he falls asleep. Or not he, the disciples fall asleep. And so what does Jesus say, right? He comes back to them and says, so you could not watch with me one hour? And Tim emphasized it well. In, in the Greek, you get some emphasis here. This is not a, a casual writing off of what they did. There seems to be real disappointment and emotion behind it. Jesus is like, oh, you happen to fall asleep. No big deal. It's, no, you couldn't keep watch with me for one hour? Jesus cared. It wounded Jesus to some degree that his friends fell asleep on him. As one writer said, in this passage, we see the loneliness of Jesus. Again, Jesus, being fully human, had needs to eat, to sleep, but maybe he also needed relationship. In this passage, we see him desiring that. Let me put together, I think, which is an interesting thought to, to us today to think about. We often talk about prayer in terms of our needing to pray, right? And I've already introduced that idea to you today. As the writer of Transforming Prayer, one of the books we're using this year to help us guide our prayer life, said, you know, he is worthy, we are needy. And that is absolutely true. But have you ever considered 
that maybe Jesus, the fully human aspect of Jesus, right? He's too natured, fully God, doesn't need anything external, fully man. Do you think that part of Jesus wants us to pray because he desires a relationship with us? That he gets some type of joy or satisfaction. Maybe part of the reason why we go to prayer is not just so Santa Claus gives us something because we are in need, but we can bless him somehow in return by entering in to that relationship with him. I mean, think about the young people in your life, right? Your kids, your nieces, your nephews, younger cousins maybe. Don't you eagerly desire a relationship with them? You know, I have young kids, and, and while I had to spend a lot of time correcting their behavior, I, I don't want just their obedience. I, I want the relationship. I want to enjoy my kids and know my kids, and I want them to grow up knowing me and having a relationship with me because good fathers want relationships with their kids. He's our good father. He wants a relationship with us. Jesus cultivated the relationship with God through prayer. Jesus invited his friends into relationship with not only himself as Jesus, but also with God through prayer. Maybe Jesus is inviting us again today into relationship with him through prayer. Let's talk about the third point, spirit and flesh. Let me step back a little bit, right, and just speak to you frankly. Today I'm trying to, to make a point that's obvious to anybody who's been in church for any length of time at all and trying to do it in a fresh way so that we might consider it anew. And what is the point? That we should pray and that relationship with God is built and maintained through prayer. That's, you know, if anybody's surprised by that truth, I don't, I, sorry, I don't, that was an off-the-cuff joke. I don't know where to go with that one. But I don't think anybody's really surprised by that truth, right? We understand that. We need to pray. We need a relationship with God through prayer. Every believer quickly learns that. But I, I need to talk about prayer again today because I know that many of us struggle with living this out. I mean, I, I know I get, I get the privilege of knowing a lot of people well as a pastor, and I really do. I was talking to my wife, like uh, some pastors I hear, they're like, man, I don't really have anybody in my church I enjoy to be with. It's like, no, I actually like almost everybody in my church I really enjoy being with. <laughs> I really enjoy being with you and to hearing your stories and what God's doing in your life. But as I get to know people, I know that almost every believer that I know is dissatisfied with their prayer life. Is that you? Why is it? Why is there such a basic truth that we know? I need to pray and I get, get a relationship with God through prayer, yet we struggle with it to such an extent. I think Jesus speaks to that a little bit here in this passage, right? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Prayer is the desire of the spirit but it's often hindered by the flesh. Now, what, I'm not, what he's not talking about here is strict body-spirit lines, right? It's not saying, hey, my body, this flesh is, uh, you know, my arms and legs, that's the problem, my spirit is good. That's not what he's talking about here. When Scripture uses spirit and flesh, sometimes it's talking about that dividing line through every aspect of our being, that spirit is the part of me made new by God, aligned towards him, rightly desiring the things that I want to desire, that God made us to desire. And then there's the flesh, the selfish centered, independent, prideful part of me, right? And the spirit and the flesh war against each other in the heart of man. Your spirit, the innermost parts of who you are, wants to be with God. But the worldly and flesh parts of you doesn't. You don't want to pay the cost. I don't want to pay the cost of time, of humility, of investing that energy of confronting my heart and what's inside of me when I go to God in prayer, because let me be honest, it's a little scary, because in prayer you end up looking inside of yourself a little bit more deeply. You don't want to pay the cost of, of really getting to know God more, because sometimes that threatens our flesh, doesn't it? When I go before the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and I see him high and lifted up on that throne, there is only one response, which is total surrender. And there's a part of me that loathes to totally surrender to God. And so that par wars against and says, avoid, because it's going to cost you too much. Do you feel that tension inside of you? A willing spirit, but a weak flesh? The 
spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You will have inner conflict. Don't be scared by it. Don't avoid it. Endure it and overcome it. How do you endure and overcome the weakness of the flesh? By making the choice to pray. How do you become powerful in prayer? Start praying. There's really no other answer about it. No other choice. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He says, watch and pray that you might not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Uh, Brothers and sisters, the point is a willing spirit is not enough. I think each and every one of us have a willing spirit to be used of God, to see him work in our life through VBS or at Hopewell Church or in the ministries that you're engaged in outside of Hopewell. You want to see God move in your life. Pretty much every believer I know has a willing and sincere and genuine spirit to want to be moved by God and used by God and to see him working in powerful ways. But it's not enough to have a willing spirit. It must be supplemented by prevailing prayer, like a daily vitamin supplement. The whole life held up and girded by prayer, by prevailing prayer that is there and consistent and faithful and extends to all you do. Your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. Jesus in this night is asking his disciples to stay up and pray. In my study this week, I, I found a fact, like, how did I not know this? But it was a regular thing for the Jews in the Passover to stay up late, right? Because we all know things happen late at night. If you're a teenager, they're bad things. It was, a customary, it was customary to stay awake late on the Passover and speak of God's redemption. We're going to stay up late tonight. We're going to stretch into the hours of the night and, and burn the oil and be tired, but we're going to stay awake and remember how God is faithful and what he has done. And so these Jewish men have probably stayed awake almost every night of the Passover of almost their entire lives, including this week. Jesus says, watch and pray. How do you combat weak flesh? Watch and pray. Let me translate watch and pray. Stay awake. Watch. Be alert. Watch. Be aware of the danger. Watch. Don't fall asleep. Watch and pray. And pray. And pray. Let me ask you this. When's the last time you went to war against your selfishness, your pride, your insecurity, and sin by dedicating serious time to prayer? Say, I'm going to get on my knees, or I'm going to sit on this chair if you can't get on your knees, and I'm going to battle this out, and I'm going to go to God, and I'm going to wrestle with God in prayer. Have you ever spent a couple hours, or an hour, or 30 minutes in solid prayer? And better yet, have you ever done it with a brother or sister in the Lord? Some of the sweetest moments of my life are the times of praying with my brothers or sisters in the Lord. Sincere, real, pouring out our hearts before the Lord, asking him to move, wrestling with selfishness, sin, and pride so that we can come together and be united in prayer. Your spirit is willing. You want to see God move in your life. You want to be used of God and see him break through. You want to break out of the sin and the snares of the world and the depression and the isolation and the fear and you know, all the negative stuff that grabs a hold of us. We want to walk free of that. But so few of us, myself included, shameful to say, dedicate the time and the energy to wrestle with God in prayer, to find victory. Our spirits are willing, but our flesh is weak. But that's part of what we're trying to do this year. That's why we open up opportunities for prayer so you might join us, so we might come together as a church and do this thing to find the hope and life of God. Let me recap. We know that we cultivate a relationship with God through prayer, and we know that's one of the primary things he wants from us, is a relationship. We saw again how Jesus pursued a relationship with his father through prayer and invited his friends to join him. And we, and we are reminded that our spirits indeed are willing, but our flesh is often weak. And we overcome the weakness of the flesh by prayer. Want to be great at prayer? Start praying. And again, Jesus being fully God and fully human had needs, and maybe one of those needs was relationship. 
And again, we are needy, absolutely. But maybe, just maybe, there's a delight and a joy that God wants to have with us and share with us as we join him in prayer. Maybe, just maybe, God is calling out to your life, even still today, join me. Join me, daughter. I love you. Join me, son. I love you. Quit being distracted. Quit putting it off. Quit denying that tug of of my love for you inside of your life. Quit denying that and turn. Join me. Join me. Without prayer, we will miss out on the very core of, of what it means to be a Christ follower. The very core dynamic between us and God, that of relationship. We're going to sing a song here in a few minutes. We've got something else we'll do beforehand. And it talks about laying aside tradition and laying aside religion. And I just want to preference this by saying, look, with, tradition is not wrong. Religion, Christianity is a religion. But, but here's the heart of the song. Here's the heart, the end part of this message. That without prayer, brothers and sisters, God becomes nothing but an idea. Without prayer, God becomes nothing but a set of rules. Without prayer, God becomes nothing but a tradition. Without prayer, God becomes nothing but a hollow religion. Without prayer, God becomes nothing but a habit. Without prayer, you lose what it means to be a Christ follower. God wants a real relationship with us. Jonathan Edwards said it this way, let it be our first love, the thing we desire more than anything else, the thing we pursue above anything else, our first love in our lives, to enter into an everlasting friendship with Christ that shall never be broken. That's so good. Let me read it again. Let it be our first love to enter into an everlasting friendship with Christ that shall never be broken. Now, look, um, I, I went a little bit shorter today. You're a captive audience for a few more minutes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and bless us today by giving us a little bit of space. So what we're going to do is Jane's going to come up here in a moment and play a little bit of instrumental music. You can start now if you want, Jane. And, and I'm just going to just pray. Like just whatever that looks like in your life, just pray. You just have a couple minutes to do it. And if you need to start with repentance, God, hey, I'm sorry for turning away. Start with that. But then quickly move to the fact that he loves you and wants that relationship with you. And he delights in knowing who you are. Talk to him today, would you? And man, if you have a rock and prayer life, say thanks. And then pray for your brothers and sisters around you, because some of us might be struggling. But so take a few moments and, and pray, and then Jaden will lead us in the closing song when it's time.
Well, brothers and sisters, we're going to sing a, a new song today that we haven't sung before. It's called Make Room. And, uh, you know, if you want to keep praying, please keep doing that. But as we sing this, we just want to make room for Christ to have his way in our lives, to surrender before him, to let him do what he needs to do, to get out of our, his way, to make room for him. So as Ryan already said, the bridge go, uh, says, wake up my heart, stir my affection, tear down my guard and all my resistance, because your way is better, Jesus. Your way is better. And then we sing, shake up the ground of all my tradition, break down the walls of all my religion, because your way is better. So certainly we're not abandoning our religion. We're not saying goodbye to Christianity, but we're embracing it because we are pursuing a relationship with Christ. So if you are ready, please stand as we sing this together. Here is where I lay it down, every burden, every crown. This is my surrender, this is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down, every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender, this is my surrender. And I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. Do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, Lord. Here where I lay it down every burden every crown this is my surrender this is my surrender here is where I lay it down every lie and every doubt this is my surrender this is my surrender Break down the wall, all I need 
do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, Lord, I will make room for you. Father, this is our surrender. God, we come before you. Lord, we ask that you would change our hearts, that you would wake us up. God, that you would give us strength so that we would make room for you. God, have your way in our lives. God, do a powerful work in our hearts. Lord, we, we say that our spirit is willing. Lord, we are willing to serve you. We are willing to follow you. Will you strengthen us, God? It's a strong and powerful name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Church family, it's been a blessing to be with you today. So go this week. Make room for Jesus. And uh, have a blessed week. See you guys later.